We first met Margarita Rivchachenko near Izum in September. She accompanied a Voice of America TV crew looking into suspected Russian war crimes. Fragile looking but brave, she showed us the way to a newly discovered mass grave. Now a press officer for the Eastern Army Command, she was called to the capital. We met again at the office of Ukrainska Pravda, an online newspaper where she had worked before the war. When the Russians marched on Kyiv in February 2022, Rivchachenko's father signed up for the military and so did her boyfriend. She decided to do the same, enrolling in the territorial defense. I think that uh, if I had a gun, I, I would do something more for my, for my life. I didn't want to go out of Ukraine. I would to do something more for my country. She says the hardest thing about the war is to learn about the death of her comrades. I'm, I'm not scared to, to go back to Donetsk region uh, and to go to the position just because I feel really comfortable with uh, my guys. But uh, it's really hard to, to think about my people, my friends, my father who now in Bakhmut, uh, my boyfriend, who are serving too, so um, it's it's not hard to serve. It's really hard to um, to wait from someone from the front. Former TV reporter Anastasia Blishchik also enrolled in the armed forces of Ukraine. A native of Kherson, she says that for three years she wanted to join the army, but hesitated. That changed when the Russian launched a full-scale offensive, walking along Mikhailovska Square in Kiev next to the wrecked Russian armed vehicles on display. She remembers that decisive moment. On February 24th, I took my fiancé, a journalist, a soldier of the 95th Air Assault Brigade, Alexander Makov, to the military commissariat. On February 25th, he called me and said, how are you? I said that I would sign up for the military, and he supported my decision. Then tragedy came. In May, her fiancé was killed in the battles for Izum. It seemed that people like him were immortal. I thought it could happen to anyone, but not to him. And when I got the call, I didn't want anyone to hear what I heard. It was tough. Nearly a year later, away from the front, despite big victories, her grief is still raw. It's easier for me there. I saw with my eyes the liberation of Izum, the liberation of the village of Dovhenki, where Sasha died. Izum and Dovhenki are ours, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Blischik, who is eager to go back to the front, explains what victory means to her. Victory will come not only when we return all our territories, but when we cleanse our country of all traitors, when all Ukrainians understand that our language is the most powerful weapon, and when there is respect for all of those who are now on the front. До всіх тих, хто зараз на фронті. Мирослава Гонгадзе, VOA News, Київ, Україна.